Alive and Well STL is a presentation of the St. Louis Regional Health Commission and Rare Gem Productions to build a healthier St. Louis. Power up with the positive. Learn more at onerarejem.com. That's O-N-E-R-A-R-E-G-E-M.com. Support for Alive and Well STL comes from Beyond Housing. Helps entire communities become better places to live. Learn more at beyondhousing.org. The Regional Health Commission works in partnership with regional health sector advocates and stakeholders to improve health care access, reduce health disparities, and improve health outcomes for the uninsured and the underinsured in St. Louis City and County. Alive and Well, STL, with Bethany Johnson Javois, CEO of the St. Louis Integrated Health Network. This week, Alive and Well, STL visits the Demetrius Johnson Foundation, where what began as an effort to join forces with the community to provide updates on investigations to families who lost loved ones to homicide. The community is crying out for help, and there are individuals that live in the community that want to be involved, whereas it's so dynamic, and the stigma is that people are just accepting what's going on, that they've become callous to the violence every day, but it's not true. It's just that people are looking for some leadership and something to get involved in that's sincere and that's everlasting, and what we're trying to do is come up with an idea and approaches that are everlasting, long-lasting approach and not a quick fix and something that's sustainable for the community. For a deeper understanding, Alive and Well STL goes behind closed doors. Bethany speaks with Major Ronnie Robinson with 26 years of service on the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Force. We'll be right back. I'm tired of crying. And I think about the list that I got from you all when I first came, that it's good to cry. And then I think I'll start crying and I, I could see him saying, oh, my man, he didn't want me to cry. And I'm like, I talked to him and I talked to the Lord. And I said to God, you showed me all these phenomenal things. Why can't you show me who did this to my child? I know it won't bring him back, but at least we can have some kind of comfort. Some type of silence from out of this. And that's what I'm seeking. I don't know any other way to get it other than to talk about it to you all, to anybody. Alive and well, STL. Major Ronnie Robinson, uh, good evening to you and thank you for having us for Alive and Well being here at Demetrius Johnson Foundation. Can you tell me a little bit about how this convening came to be? Uh, Demetrius and I, from Demetrius being involved in the community and uh, through his outreach work, often we collaborate on things. And he came to me and asked me what my thoughts were about addressing the violence in the community. And um, I thought about it. I said, well, what we need to do is we need to reach out and hear from the community from what, what they need. And we need to address, one thing we need to address is the ill wills of the community and how it's suffering from traumatic events and specifically homicide and shootings. The families that I've encountered after they lose a loved one or the kids that witness their friends that are being killed in the streets, they don't receive any type of counseling or the care that they need. And it happens over and over and over again. And we had a forum and at that forum he went out on the radio and invited the community to come address the specifics that they wanted from the police department and what they wanted as far as addressing violent crime in the community. And this building was packed with about three, over 300 people. And it started at 6.30 and ended at 9.30 and not one person, if one person left, I didn't see that person leave. The community is crying out for help. And there are individuals that live in the community that want to be involved. Whereas it's so dynamic and the stigma is that people are just accepting what's going on, that they've become callous to the violence every day. But it's not true. It's just that people are looking for some leadership and something to get involved in that's sincere and that's everlasting and not just a, a quick fix. And what we're trying to do is come up with an idea and approaches that are everlasting, long lasting approach and not a quick fix, and something that's sustainable for the community. The first thing we started was reaching out to the families, the victims who have suffered from homicide, 
losing loved ones to violent crime. And we reached out to Kati Waheed and Joe Yancey. And those two guys are awesome individuals and always have served the community. I've worked with Khatib for over 20 years relative to some of the missions that he's been on in the community. And he's a very sincere and intelligent individual and addresses crime through outreach. And as a police officer, I've been on the force now for 26 years. And as a police officer, I know that enforcement alone is not the answer to the problems in the community that I serve. What is the answer? I sincerely believe the answer is outreach, intervention, and enforcement. And when I mean intervention and outreach to the community, I mean that the police have to collaborate with people that look just like the people that live in the community and approach and develop a relationship that's positive where the people that have a relationship that are not policemen that have a professional relationship with the community through outreach and intervention working with us and helping us build those bridges of communication that we need instead of it's always a confrontational encounter a lot of cases when the police officers first address crime or address the issue in the community as a confrontation or as tense and we need to be better about communicating as police officers and also as far as what I do for a living and where we need to clean up as far as my agency is concerned and all policemen across the nation is that we have to stop accepting police officers that are not professional and if we see something we have to address it and let our peers know our comrades know hey you're not going to do that. You're not going to behave in that manner. You're going to be only be professional and treat people with respect if you just expect to get respect. So you got to give it. So my question to you is this show is called Alive and Well. My question is, what is your hope for this group and for our community to be alive and well? What's it going to take to go from trauma and pain of death from homicide to really being alive and well because that's a steep climb it is you you're absolutely right what needs to happen is that we have to gain the trust of the community the citizens and the only way we're going to do that is through communication because we're having shootings on a consistent basis and homicides consistently and when we respond we can't get any cooperation as far as witnesses, as far as information to solve these shootings and homicides and the circumstances around them. If we get information, then we could stop, hopefully stop retaliatory shootings and people live long enough to, especially our young people that are involved in criminal activity and violence. If they live long enough, they may make a decision and decide to do the right things in life and take care of some of the responsibilities that they put on this earth as far as the children as far as their moms and dads and being there for their families. But life is so, to them in a lot of their eyes, there's so much disparity when I look into the eyes of a lot of young men that are in the streets. And they don't have the nurturing. I don't see any nurturing in them. And you just think about it. In order to hurt someone that looks like you, to kill somebody and then just not have any remorse about it. I think I'm a pretty rational guy and that's irrational thinking to me. So I can't quite understand it, but I understand the culture and I can see how just from my experience of being in the community, how that can happen, how people can get to that point when there's so much pressure, so much turmoil, so much violence around them. And if you're around something long enough, you might adapt and become that. Absolutely. And I think that is we're seeing products of environment, unfortunately, for us. So can you speak to the person who's struggling to make a choice about how they're going to respond to the situation or multiple situations that have happened to them? Appeal to the person who's struggling with making a good decision. What would you say to appeal to them to change their mind about going in the wrong direction? I've, I've done it consistently in my career. First and foremost, that type of person, that individual that you, descri you just described, they have to know that you're sincere and that you can't lie to them about anything. And when you say you're going to do something, you have to do it because they've been disappointed so many times in their lives and you can't become part of that disappointment or else they'll write you off quick. Society has created a culture within a culture in the community that I serve. But what I see, violence is much more prevalent in the black community as opposed to the white community. And through my experience in this city, we've created a culture, and when I say we, I say society, that 
for four decades now. Going on four decades. City of St. Louis has suffered from crack cocaine infestation, drugs, poor education facilities, lack of education relative to the dropout rate in the city being over 70 percent in inner city schools and the pressure. Sometimes from the time up to time a black child comes out of his or her mother's womb, they're fighting for survival and it's just in the community that they live in and they have to be aggressive in order to survive just to walk to a corner store sometimes you got to walk past a gang set to be accepted in that community and if you don't then you suffer punishment bullying uh, being aggressively attacked or assaulted and if you don't join that any that that entity then you might perish you know being scared all the time fear being scared all the time and the fear that stresses out our community is done by who, basically? I don't know. Young black males. When you're looking over your shoulder, when you're at the ATM, who are you looking for? Well, I'm not looking for a young black male, actually, but I get the stigma. You get the stigma, right? Stigma. Professionally, every night, every day I study crime, right? So when I come in in the morning, I look at the report from the crime that's happened in the inner city, in the city. The descriptions that we get, who do you think they depict? It's a very generic young black male. Okay. There you go. So the stigma is there. And we have to admit that. We have to admit that. If we don't admit it, how can we solve it? How can we cure it? If that, if that entity is crying out for help, we have to address that, right? To admit it makes us accountable. And if we're accountable, we have to do something. And that scares people. Hey, it's time out for being scared now. You know, scared has got us to the point where we are right now. You know, this whole situation in the city of St. Louis right now is being addressed and looked at and studied by the entire world through the last traumatic events that started August the 9th, right? Okay, then. So now we have to change. That element has woke up. And they're a part of these protests and they come out at night and they not having it anymore they want justice but still on the other hand we still have violence that's happening and occurring every day in our own community so we have to do something different we're not getting the job done we're constantly constantly suffering from violent crime in closing what hope do we have or what hope do you see on the horizon based on where we are we got a long way to go but what hope can we offer what seeds can we plant that can grow maybe in the next generation in the next five years that you think we need in st louis i see hope because i've seen successes i've seen young black males turn their life around and become productive citizens through nurturing through communication giving them a chance and the opportunity to do that, putting them in good places where they can make some solid decisions and teach them discipline. And if you don't address it and, and attack it head on and get in that element, it's not going to change because there are forces that exploit the young mind that's undereducated, that's undernourished. And those forces out there will take advantage for their own agendas. And sometimes in a lot of cases, those agendas are evil. So we the people that are rational, like I say I'm rash pretty rational thinking, I think you are too. We have to step up. And the black man has to step up in his community along with his woman and take control of their, our own community. We got to clean out our own backyard. You know, other groups, ethnicities control their neighborhoods, right? We have to do the same. We got to be held accountable. So if I'm out here 12, 14 hours a day, mm -hmm. I need other people out here 12, 14 hours a day until we get the situation solved. Well, I appreciate your call to action, Major Robinson, and thank you for all that you have done, for all that you are doing. I got some more coming. Fight the good fight, yes, and uh, I'll be back to see what else amazing happens because of the work that you and so many others are doing. Yes, ma'am. Bless. Thank you.
Thank you very much. The meetings were a chance to reestablish the critical trust that is needed to collaboratively close the many unsolved murders in this community. This weekly meeting serves as an opportunity to build a relationship that makes a key difference for a community to thrive. We are grateful for your gift of time to this conversation. We encourage you to stay involved and get involved. Visit AliveAndWellSTL.com to learn more. You are invited to join the conversation. If you, your family, or your organization is interested in talking about how we better the well-being of the region, sign up for more information, join the conversation, log on to AliveAndWellSTL.com, and let's build a plan on how we can work together and improve our overall health and become Alive and Well. The Regional Health Commission with Chief Executive Officer Robert Friend Jr. committed to providing a detailed review of change over the past decade in 14 leading health indicators for the city and county of St. Louis. The first decade review of health status report, an update to building a healthier St. Louis. Discover the narrative, the data, and celebrate the progress already made to improve health care access and reduce health disparities in our region. Learn more at stlrhc.org. Alive and Well STL is another positive production of Rare Gym Productions. Thanks for listening.